The political map of Europe is radically changing as far-right parties gain momentum. Far-right parties and policies are having a revival across Europe. Far-right parties are gaining power in Sweden, Denmark, Austria, the Netherlands. Here's the far-right Sweden Democrats leader taking the applause after winning 20 seats in Parliament. They can now claim to hold the balance of power. Extreme nationalists and ultra-right populists have found footholds in parliaments across the continent. Gone are the days when the far right could be dismissed as a fringe concern of European politics. We're in an interesting situation in 2011. We've got a growing legitimisation of a number of far-right movements, movements that were once considered toxic by the political establishment. Geert Wilders, who, in his own words, hates Islam. Islam has harmed us all the time, centuries, over and over again. No legislation can be passed without his party's support. In Denmark and Italy for the last decade, far-right parties have been part of governing coalitions. We look at scheduled elections next year in France and Austria. You've got Marine Le Pen out polling Nicolas Sarkozy. You've got Heinz Christian Stracker's Freedom Party in Austria, looking like it may become the largest party in the country. Also, you've got single-issue anti-immigrant parties doing well in Norway, Finland and Switzerland. The backdrop of this is that the rhetoric from mainstream politicians has shifted to questioning notions of multiculturalism and identity. You've seen speeches from Europe's leaders questioning the concept of multiculturalism and trying to reaffirm some vague idea of national identity. Living side by side and being happy with each other, this approach has failed utterly. Mainstream politicians, not only in Europe, but also in the US and Australia are launching debates on national identity and multiculturalism, which is having a real effect on the lives of racial and religious minorities. Anti-Muslim protesters hurl insults and abuse at people attending an Islamic charity fundraiser in Yorba Linda. In this month's New Internationalist, Kay Biswas explores rising anti-immigrant sentiment across the globe. We will peacefully protest but we will not be scared into silence. And in addition, journalist Rowena Davis investigates homophobia within far-right movements in Russia and Eastern Europe. I was looking specifically at the rise of the far-right in Eastern Europe, and there's two ways in which the rise in the far-right in the East is different to that in the West. The first is quite simply because it has in the East a homophobic edge to it, and that's largely due to the fact that the church is more prominent in Eastern Europe. And the second issue, which I think was...